I'm probably going to start my day tomorrow uh, after 10 o'clock. I want to see a trend, right? I, I want to see something develop that's going to give me more clarity of which way we, we want to trade the market again. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Uh, welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Uh, unfortunately, this updates me very, well, at least on the shorter side. Uh, my son was asked to play with another team today. They were short guys. Anyway, so I got to literally just get out of here after I'm done. So. Uh, let's talk about the tape. So we, we, we know we've been going linear, right? We know we've been going linear for quite a while over the last week. So the idea that we got pulled today was not a surprise, right? I, I don't think that's any anybody's uh, surprise because we always talk about, especially uh, for the last you know X amount of uh, weeks, especially don't buy anything, right? The, the moves, the stocks that have gone bonkers, have you know, had their big, big moves, there's no value in them, right? There, there's absolutely no value. Uh, you know, the stocks have made their move and any time that gravity kicks in, they're the first ones to get hit. And what well, wasn't surprising that they did pull the market today and they pulled it pretty aggressively. And you can see uh, the 60 minute view. You had literally one, two, three, four, you had five candles in a row of pretty aggressive selling. And what was surprising about today's selling, at least in the beginning, number one, how easily it went through the five day moving average. And you see here right over here, again, five day is a shortest term sentiment. Uh, what was also very, very unusual today that they went through the 10 day moving average very, very quickly as well with, without putting up a real fight. And the reason why I say it was so odd that it happened today, well, as you can see here by, you know, by, by the news, this was the Super Bowl, right? Today was like the Super Bowl of earnings. You had uh, Google, you had Apple, you had AMD, you had Starbucks, Microsoft, TDOC, you had a slew of companies. So the idea was that it was very hard to kind of mentally register that they were going to sell down these stocks into the hole ahead of their numbers. Because you're always, you're always thinking to yourself, where well, there's always going to be uh, pension funds, mutual fund, index funds bidding for stock, right, for longer term plays. So there's not going to be any level of fear. So the idea that they took today to kind of get down the market or quote unquote, at least NASDAQ 100 um, was very, very surprising. The, the most uh, the most amazing part about today's session was once they started hitting these stocks initially, my first thought was, well, I, I, there's no way mentally I can wrap my head around starting selling these stocks over and over and over and over, especially what we just talked about ahead of earnings. All it takes is one uptick in the futures, a reload bottom a buyer at the bottom of the range, and you're getting squeezed just like every single time anybody try to do that over a, a longer period of time that started if you watch the broadcast you know, four and a half, almost five years ago, going into uh, spilling over to a different presidency. So we kind of knew that. Uh, what was crazier about today's session was how they kind of came back and reclaimed macro levels. So if you look at, you had five consecutive candles. These are all hourly candles. They came and they really sold the crap out of these stocks. I'm talking about, uh, if you look intraday, you see Amazon, uh, got really, really hit. You know, Amazon, Roku was basically just giving up its whole move. And they just kept on coming one by one by one. Now, you had a, a, a lot of names that were reporting earnings tonight. We also had names like Tesla that started getting hit, were hit very, very aggressively, tested successfully the 150-day moving average, and rallied. And not only, for, for the bull's point of view, not only did they reclaim uh, the 10-day moving average, they reclaimed everything. They reclaimed the five as well. And I thought today after we were going to get the earnings, you know, from the Google, from the AMDs, Microsoft and Apple and so forth and so on, I thought that the, the reaction on earnings, earnings is probably going to give us more clues going into tomorrow's session. And they all started out pretty good, right? You had Google was up like, you know, Google was up 50, 70 points after the close at one point. And then they came back and now it's starting to get its focus, right? They sold off Microsoft pretty aggressively. They sold off Microsoft. 
Uh, you had Starbucks, and again, I'm guilty. I'm an addict to Starbucks. They sold off Starbucks. They sold TDOC, right? They sold that as well. AMD is basically up like a buck, right? Basically up a buck. Uh, Apple is pretty flat. And again, you can go through, uh, you can go through one by one on all these stocks and kind of review their earnings. But the point was everything that I wanted to kind of settle, right? To at least kind of get my brain flowing and just start mentally preparing for tomorrow's session. Nothing basically happened, right? Nothing basically settled today. We're getting a lot of mixed bag uh, into earnings. You're even getting a name like Shopify that accessed uh, the debt market. Uh, they, did a, they did a debt offering uh, after the close as well. Excuse me, a mixed shelf offering after, after the close as well. So you're kind of up in the air. And I know I see a lot of people talking about, well, we're definitely selling tomorrow. We sold today, right? You know, we sold today. You can't talk about what we're doing tomorrow. We sold today. The Qs, if you look at the Qs, right? If you look at the Qs, the Qs literally went from today from 368 to 360. This was the selling. And now when you look at a lot of charts tonight, and this is where, you know, it's going to be a little bit challenging, but when you're looking at charts right now, everything's at the middle of the range. Literally, everything's in the middle of the range. And if you, and if you look at a market that just bounced back off and reclaimed macro levels, and now you have very lackluster, kind of a mixed bag of earnings, well, you're kind of put into the, well, let's guess for tomorrow. I don't want to guess, right? I'm not that smart. Um, I'm probably one of the dumbest human beings you're going to meet in real life. I have a clue what I'm doing as far as this crap goes, but again, the last thing you want to do is put yourself in a situation that you're playing the victim role instead of playing the predator. We, we can't guess tomorrow. Right now, if you look at every single stock today from uh, the point of interest with, within their channels, everything is stuck. And now we're going to need a lot more clues going into tomorrow's session. I personally think tomorrow is going to be one of those days that you probably want to let the 10 o'clock channel turn tomorrow. Um, and what I mean by that, there's only six candles of the day, okay? When I, I trade 60 minute candles, there's only six candles of the day. I think that first candle is going to need to give us some sort of rhyme or reason, some sort of, you know, some sort of um, foundation of what we think is gonna happen for the rest of the day. And, you know, you talk about, you know, you talk about charts and you talk about clarity, but when you have this type of aggressive move today, and this was a very, very aggressive move, uh, basically anybody who shorted the market today uh, in the last, in the first three hours of the day, especially on the index side, got run over literally on one candle. So it's a tricky, tricky situation going into tomorrow. Usually when you do your chart work, you have a very definitive stance for, for the next day. You have a, you have a very strong opinion and, and all you're looking to do for that, for that trading day is wait for your conviction or wait for your research to kind of play out. Tomorrow we're in a very unusual place that the market is really gonna have to show us which way the wind is gonna blow. At least now we understand the bottom of the range here and the top of the range here. We get that. What I'm hoping doesn't happen is we're going to be playing ping pong within that range, within that tight range uh, for the next couple of days. And it's, coming, it's, it's really going to need to see some sort of leadership for tomorrow. Um, I, I get that Microsoft is lower, right? I get that uh, Starbucks is lower. So it's going to put a lot of pressure, uh, you know, it's going to put a lot of pressure on the NASDAQ 100 names. Even Apple, who's not down a lot, right? You know, it's not down a lot, but it's still down $1.50 on the day. You know, can it get down to 43 and a half, 44? Yeah, absolutely. Why not? So, but it doesn't really scream sell the market. So I think tomorrow's session, you have to be really, really patient, like incredibly patient. Um, I think if you're one of those hyper um, ADD or, you know, personalities, you, you might want to take tomorrow off, okay? Because I, I get it. You, you know, you want to step on everything that moves. Uh, you want to trade everything in sight. But the problem is when you have a bottom range that just got put in today, but you're $5 off that bottom range, and now after the close, stocks are starting to drift right back closer to that bottom range, you're going to be faced with a lot of tight channels, a lot of volatility in that tight channels. And when you have a lot of volatility 
in tight channels, usually not a lot of good things are going to happen. So going into tomorrow, you know, I'm 50-50. I usually don't say that. I have a very uh, definitive opinion here. Um, I'm probably going to start my day tomorrow uh, after 10 o'clock. I want to see a trend, right? I, I want to see something develop that's going to give me more clarity of which way we, we want to trade the market. Again, I'm not naive. We get it, right? Linear market, we don't need a reason for the stock market to go down. Gravity, right? This is gravity. People are going to turn around and say, well, that was the top. It's not the top. Okay, don't be naive. You know, people have been screaming at the top for the last four and a half, five years on every single reversal off the highs. Why don't we just call it the market had a really good run and the market went down today, right? Nothing more, nothing less. This is not the end of the world. This is not the end of the bull market. All it is is a market that had a phenomenal move, did very, very well on the long side. Uh, the earnings were, eh, right, very meh. They're okay, but the point is we want to see the reactionary view after the earnings a couple of days ahead, and let's see what happens long-term. Remember, you're always thinking long-term. You're not thinking about tomorrow. Tomorrow, we understand what's in front of us, right? We're not going to be shocked when we're sitting there at 10 o'clock and say, well, which way we're we going to confirm? You're going to go up, you're going to go down, pick a direction, damn it, do something already. I won't be shocked doing that because again, I already went through the charts. I already see what's what. So I, I get the idea that you're not gonna have the smoothest day. Can something wake up tomorrow ahead of its own earnings and start confirming channels? Sure, you know, we talked about that TTD yesterday. Uh, we talked about how, you know, everybody should watch this thing above that uh, 82, 75, 83 level, you know, stock traded to 85 today. Listen, can this thing have a day two run? Sure, why not, right? This thing looks good. Uh, Expedia, you know, can it, can it have finally run? We talked about this channel that didn't confirm it. Can it possibly have a run? Sure, absolutely. So there's still individual names uh, that could do very, very well. But based on what I'm seeing today, and again, I, I really encourage everybody uh, to put in the time every single day to, to look at charts. When you do your due diligence today and put in the research, you're not going to be shocked of what I'm saying. You're going to see exactly what I'm talking about. And the last thing you want to do is be very, very pigheaded or be very, very motivated to, right, to click a mouse when stocks are in the middle of their range. So guys, have an open mind tomorrow, right? Have an open mind uh, don't have a bias. Maybe wait for that 10 o'clock channel to kind of see which way the wind is blowing. And if we get some expansion channels, you know what? That's what we're here to do and we we'll take advantage of. If not, what's the worst case scenario? You trade the next day, right? Again, guys, it's very, very important to understand. We don't trade when the market is open. We trade because we have value. Tomorrow looks like we're starting the day with a 3-9 offsuit. Will we get a better hand? We'll see, right? As the blind man said, we shall see. Guys, have a blessed day. I got to get to my son's basketball game. And with God's help, I'll see you all tomorrow. Take